This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Today, Taiwan announces their new submarine, Nagorno-Karabakh announces its dissolution, and Travis King is returned to America. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Thursday, the 28th of September, 2023. This morning, Taiwan unveiled its first domestically made submarine. The submarine has been created in an attempt to bolster its defences against a potential Chinese attack, something Taiwan and indeed the Western world have been concerned about for a while. US officials have actually warned for some time that China could be capable militarily of launching an invasion of Taiwan in the next few years. William Chung of the Institute for National Defense and Security Research in Taiwan explained that the submarines could aid Taiwan's relatively small navy in taking initiative against China's mighty navy by conducting guerrilla-style warfare with their stealth, lethality and surprise capabilities. Speaking further about this new military development, the Taiwanese president Tsai Ing-wen said that history will remember this day. She added that building a submarine had been considered an impossible task, but we did it. The submarine itself cost $1.54 billion, is diesel electric powered and will be delivered to the Navy by 2024. While this submarine has been shown off today, the Taiwanese are actually already working on a second one and plan to have a fleet of 10 submarines in total. Now, while 10 submarines does sound like a lot, it actually is massively less than the 60 boats that China has, which include nuclear-powered attack submarines. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine, or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. The separatist government of Nagorno-Karabakh has announced that it will dissolve itself and that the unrecognized state will cease to exist by the end of the year. The decree signed by the region's president announced the dissolution of all state institutions and organizations under their departmental subordinations by January 1st, 2024, and the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh, or Artsakh, ceases to exist. It comes after Azerbaijan launched a rapid 24-hour military operation to reclaim control of the region, ending with a ceasefire in which the ethnic Armenian separatist forces agreed to lay down their weapons. According to regional officials, more than half of the region's roughly 120,000 people have since fled to neighbouring Armenia, rather than facing integration of the territory into Azerbaijan. Armenia's Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan said that this is an act of ethnic cleansing of which we were warning the international community about for a long time. Meanwhile, Azerbaijan has charged Ruben Vadanyan, the former head of the separatist government, with financing terrorism, creating illegal armed formations and illegally crossing a state border. Earlier this year, Travis King, a United States Army soldier, crossed the DMZ from South Korea into North Korea. This was at a time when King was facing dishonorable discharge from the military on a charge of assault. Initially, the US government claimed that they were in communication with North Korea. However, it was claimed that the North Korean government fell short of providing information about King's whereabouts or his status. Later, in August, the Korean Central News Agency, a propaganda arm of the North Korean government, claimed that King had illegally crossed into the country due to inhumane maltreatment and racial discrimination within the US Army. The Associated Press claimed that this was an impossible claim to verify. Irrespective, recently the North Korean government reported that King would be expelled and that he would be returned to American custody. This morning, King was transferred into US custody in the Chinese border city of Dandong and flown to Osan Air Base in South Korea. Right now, it's not clear exactly what actually prompted King to seek refuge in North Korea, nor what punishment he'll receive upon returning to the United States. Overnight last night, Russia continued their attack on Ukraine, this time sending another barrage of Shahed drones. In total, it's been reported that Russia sent 44 of these drones, 34 of which were destroyed. The drones were spotted over the Black Sea. The drones which did land hit three regions, Mykolaiv, Odessa and Kirovarad. Speaking of the attack, the governor of Kirovarad wrote on Telegram that we had an extremely difficult night. Some of the Shahids over the region were destroyed, however there were also hits. 
The governor of the Edessa region claimed that his region was the main target. Right now, in both of these cases, there have been no reports of any casualties, nor any reports of civilian infrastructure being destroyed. The spokesperson for the Ukrainian Southern Military also commented on the attacks on Telegram, saying that Moscow does not stop the pressure and searching for new attacks, namely with the use of mass attacks. She added that tonight several groups of strike UAVs were launched. Air defense worked along almost the entire southern direction, in Odessa, Mykolaiv regions. Also much higher north, the enemy aimed its attack on central Ukraine. Today, workers who enjoy a drink at the United States' base in Antarctica will be disappointed, as it's been reported that the federal agency that oversees the research program will stop serving alcohol. This comes following a number of reports of sexual harassment at the base. In fact, a report from 2022 demonstrated that 59% of women had experienced harassment or assault while in Antarctica, and 72% of women said that it was a problem. It's important to point out, though, that it is claimed that this is not the reason behind the drinks ban. In some of the cases of sexual harassment, alcohol played a role, but the current drink ban is more related to morale and welfare at the base. Interestingly, although workers cannot order a beer at the bars on the base, workers still will be able to bring their own alcohol to the bars. Each worker gets an alcohol ration, which can buy the equivalent of 18 beers each week, three bottles of wine, or a 750 milliliter bottle of spirit. In a statement about the change, the National Science Foundation said that we will not rest until we are confident that every member of the Antarctic community feels safe and supported. In the final uplifting story today, we discuss a church in Texas. In recent months, Republicans in the state have tried to make drag a crime, with this repeatedly being challenged in court by civil rights groups. In spite of this, the Cathedral of Hope Church in Texas has made an effort to defend the queer community from persecution. As part of this, they recently held a service where they blessed all drag queens and pledged to stand for justice, proclaim love, and protect the rights of all people. They did this while dozens of protesters stood outside the church shouting slurs and threats. The church added that we recognise that all people are made into the loving image of God, no matter who they are, how they dress, express themselves or who they love, and that we celebrate this divine diversity and commit to lifting up the voices of the LGBTQ community and creating spaces where everyone can thrive. Things are expected to change with a story like this, so make sure you stay on top of updates. That way you know what's going on, and let's be honest, it always feels great to stay on top of things. Even within TLDR, a few of us have been brushing up our InDesign skills in order to create the newspaper we're currently working on. It turns out that making a professional looking newspaper is pretty difficult, so we headed to Skillshare to take their course on the topic. Unlike when I tried to learn InDesign for another never-released project a few years ago, this time I was guided through the process quickly and effectively, and this time the project will actually see the light of day thanks to Skillshare's incredibly easy-to-follow guides. It's not just that either, you likely already knew Skillshare for classes on things like photography, editing and illustration, but Skillshare also has hundreds of career-focused classes too. We all know at this stage that traditional jobs aren't one size fits all. I mean, I finished university and came straight into a job at a YouTube channel. That's not necessarily the path that you want to take, but the courses on Skillshare can help you design a career to fit you. There's courses on everything from how to start a business to maximizing your workflow or how to grow in e-commerce. Another course that Jack's actually taking to help with the newspaper project. And if you use our link, you can get access to all of that for free. That's right, the first 1,000 people to use the link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare.